XP4 as we dropped into the top three of the tournament. We are now into the prizing, and I'm mm. truly excited to finally crown a brand new TXP winner with this event. Everybody who is in the top three has never won a TXP before, so this is going to be exciting to see who gets to go into the grand finals to play against that Saints green team. I know that Saints green team has mm. been really waiting quite a while to see who <laughs> is going to be their challenger, but my name is Seymour, joined here by Hyper Active. How you feeling, buddy? You excited for this one? I'm very excited. We just saw what an intense battle that Saints Gold has gone into. You know, then you've got Sudor, who, let's be honest, they did put up a good fight against Green. They were knocked down, so there's redemption time here. So, honestly, I genuinely think there is potential for both teams to get through in the ways that I can't, put, I can't pin it. I can't pin who's going to go through because we've not seen the matchup. And they both have a fire behind them. Yeah, they both do have a fire behind them. I think for Sudor in general, I've been really impressed with the way that they've just kind of eased their way into the winner's final. Yes, I mean, that Saints green team is going to be tough to play against, but they got a little bit of taste of the Demon, and then they get to drop down and, you know, maybe get some revenge on their sister team here in Saints Gold. And, you know, for this grand final, we can talk about the maps that we're going to be seeing hyperactive as well, because we're going to that skyline for the map number one, which is going to be good for the Saints. I feel like they've been playing really well in skyline control this mm -hmm. weekend. So transitioning that control over and towards a hard point is going to be good, but... At the same time, it's a Skyline Hardpoint. That is going to be a very mixy one. It, it, it really is, because I know that you mentioned before, those spawns are a bit... Yeah, they're quite, finicky. They're finicky. So it all really depends on how you use it, if you're able to capitalize on these so-what-so finicky spawns. And if you can, then holding these places down, particularly the meeting room, is a golden point you want to get hold of. Otherwise, you've got to make sure you have all spots uh, in position. You want to make sure you have the balcony. You've got to have cat control up by stairs. There's lots of areas that you must have. And a lot of teams have, I've noticed some in the group stages, a lot of teams didn't have that control. Now we're in these later stages. These guys are very confident on it. I think realistically, Sudor, I feel they're good on this one as well. I don't think they played much of it. But from what I've seen, from what they've been playing against, they went against day by day and I saw some of the gameplay there. Honestly, CQB, I don't think it's a problem for them. No, I no, I, I don't disagree that it's not going to be a problem for this Sudor game. They've been impressive from start to finish for the TXP4, but heading into the map number two, we're looking at a protocol search and destroy. Map number three is going to be a red card control. That's going to be important because I don't mm. think we've actually seen St. Clair play the red card control, so yes. maybe that's where Sudor find their edge in this one. If you even go into it with a 1-1 tie, it's going to be a big swing game that we actually almost saw Saints fall behind on back on that vault. But map number four, and this is kind of funny because, you know, the Saints, when they're going through the pick bands, we were sitting there and, you know, Bendy, he was like, guys, do we really want to play vault? Should we ban out vault? And they're like, no, keep banning out rewind hard points. And what do you know, Sudor, they pick vault for map four hard points. So that's going to be a testy one for the Saints if they do go into that at a disadvantage or even if it's going into it with that advantage. You really never know, I guess, when you go into that vault for Saints gold. But map number five, Skyline Search and Destroy. We got that Skyline sandwich. Yeah. So the both sides of this one, I think, is going to be a mixy one. Uh, if we do get to that map five, I don't want to put any, uh, I'd say, weight on Twitch just yet. It's definitely going to be a toss-up who we see when if it does go to that distance. Absolutely. And if we do go Skyline, honestly, you know, I'm 50-50 I'm when it comes to Skyline. I don't like those CQB. I don't like the way the map is. But for an S and D, and to finish it off, that is in pressure to the max because you well, you don't have room. You don't have room to move around. You can't manage your way through. It's not like take uh, Volcoda where you can really move around and get around into different places. I know I'm not, I'm someone who likes Volcoda, so I'll, I'll confess there. But Skyline, it's so narrow. One mistake, and it could be the smallest thing. Yeah, can, can change the game. You lose the round, so it's very critical, especially on Skyline. You don't make these mistakes. You've got to be fluid and stick to your basics. We don't get to see Vorkuda in the map set for this one. I know it's a little sad. We didn't really get to see Vorkuda all weekend long, but it seems like it's a general consensus that teams just don't want to play that map. So I'm not surprised to see it here. Maybe we'll get it into the grand finals if uh, Saints Green want to try out expanding their map pool. I know some of the members were saying that they were thinking about expanding it, but uh, that's to be determined. And first, we got to decide what their challenger is because the mm. stipulations for this game right now is that you win, you go into a chance to play play for $1,000 in second place or $3,000 in first place. You lose here, you're kind of leaving the tournament with $500, which at least out of 16 teams, you're placing in the pricing. But for all three of these teams here... 
there is no doubt in my mind that any of these teams can be in that grand finals. So oh, yeah. it's going to be a test for both sides on who's going to make it into that last mat, that last spot. Absolutely. And I think as well, walking into the pseudo, running the winner's bracket, they only got knocked down by Saints Green. So that for them, they know what they're up against if they can get past this. That's the thing. If they can get past this 100%, they're, they're, they know the next territory. But also one thing I do love about pseudo is their loudness. I, it's a shame we can't hear the actual players I in the know. background. But honestly, I these know. guys are loud. They're pumped. They want every piece of this. And I want to make sure that they, their opponents know exactly where they are and exactly what they're doing. So we should be hearing. It should be here screaming, yeah, especially think, if you're in the loud. I think you're looking at this guy right here yes. to be the loudest. Yeah, Tyler. Uh, this guy right here to be the loudest. <laughs> Those two are the ones that you're kind of looking at to be the loud ones. That's Tyler and, you know, Brandon. I'm wherever my hand goes. <laughs> that's what you're going to be looking at because people in the crowd, they've been loving it. I think Brandon, um, back in their game versus Team 6, he was getting loud. The whole team, there's a clip on Twitter of it. If you guys want to go check it out, at Toronto XP, that's where you're going to see these guys getting loud. But the people in the venue, they have been loving the trash talk. And myself, in fact, I do love some trash talk. So I want to see these teams get loud. I want to see them put some passion into this game as we got this game number one going. It's Sudor Gaming trying to take down the Saints. Absolutely, and already off the get-go, Sudor are not having the greatest start. Actually, they're both on the left side. We mentioned how finicky these spawns can be. Both spawns left, so that gives a question mark. Now, eventually, Sudor spawns right. I point this out because, yes, P1, you can get some great time, get some early points, but realistically, it's P2. is where they need to focus off the get-go because that's where the money really comes in. Yeah, it is, so... The rotations in for the side of Sudor. They have those better spawn Saints. They have an advantage, at least in the time for now, but they're not finding the kills to the middle of the map, and Sudor's doing a good job at at least shutting down that extension that we're seeing. So this should lead to a safe transition for Sudor to hold this lead, push it a little bit farther. They're in the meeting room, and for the Saints, off of uh, what was a really close game, coming out flat like this is not what you would have expected. No, it's not expected at all, and I tell you what, having that control off the get-go, not only for P1, 40 points to seven that's a huge hold off the get-go for p1 and now they're on p2 as well you said it yourself transition on point but look at this double play coming in from the south this could be dangerous indeed as they push onto point yeah brandon he's on the flank here nobody's going to be able to read this one they're turned around he shoots the one in the back early trade there from grz nacho's going to slide in and at least nacho gets the break for the saints maka it's his turn but only able to find the one so the saint Clair saint getting in for what seems like the last 20 seconds of this hill. They're going to be able to cut that lead down a little bit. One last shot from Tyler Fleury. Not going to work out. So for Sudor, they're going to count their chickens and they're just going to move over to the next hill. Yeah, Max already ready for that hill. He's already got, this, got the position. This time, spawns, you can go either way. You can go either way for P3, but realistically, you want to be looking at P4, which is exactly what uh, St. Clair are doing as they are rotating all the way around to the back deck and heading through long. They want to make sure they're prepped and ready for four, and they are doing that indeed. They flipped the spawns, so Sudar Gaming, they spent so much time trying to set up for P3, and it really didn't pay off. Still fighting for that time, as the spawns are definitely not safe, it seems, for both sides. It's back and forth flipping. Saints now into the time, down by 30. They need as much as they can get here to try to fix their mistakes from the start of the skyline. It's getting mixing the point, but all the kills in the feed looking gold, and they flip Sudor out yet again. Again, nobody's going to get the read on that. So see, Sudor now playing for the contest. Yeah, and it, it, St. Clair just keep, keep flipping. They're the ones being the aggressors here, making sure they have point, they have the control, have the spawns, and in doing so, they have position next for four. But look at this aggression. Three looking to come. Two of them below, one of them, one of them above, onto this next point. They're going to get two, but it's not going to be a great hold. No, they actually do clear out. So now they have that control. Yeah, it's a good team shots on the player in the back. Brandon, he's been the one looking to be holding down those spawns, but St. Clair fighting them from the front. They're going to hit this right away, and they do, in fact, break from the front. So all those Sudor spend all that time trying to flip those spawns, it doesn't pay off into a very secure hold, and now the St. Clair Saints have forced them into the back, and Sudor have to be careful not to get spawn trapped. Well, it's good enough for them to fight back into it. They get the fort down, so last 30 seconds will keep them into a safe lead heading 
leads the second set, but Saints, it is definitely a lot better of a showing to the back half of that first rotation than it was in the start. Grizz as well, on a three streak, he's got, got some streaks going for himself, and he's got four now, so it keeps on going, finally gets taken out, so that is critical. We're starting to see some kills going in, some streaks coming forward. Not enough yet, not enough yet for anything major, but right now, calm um, before the storm, it is chill and pushing in. St. Clair, half point. 30-point lead for Sudor Gaming on the second set. St. Clair are here. As you see those blue arrows now trying to suffocate Brandon on this point, but he's on four in a row. He is thriving right now in what seems like the chaos of Skyline. This lead is starting to narrow down for the Saints. They have clawed their way back into this map one. Still, Sudor have those better spawns for P2, so I think for St. Clair, they need to start thinking about that overextension. Who's going to be the one to try to push into the back and see if they can flip things out. They need to start thinking about it soon. They really do, and you can see number two doing, going down south. He's going to be the one looking for that flip set. Same with four going around. So that's Gorilla, uh, sorry, Slayer and Brandon trying to see what they can push in, and that's a good start. They've got control, and it looks like they're going to have the spawns fl flipped because it's completely wiped. A free time, free scraps, and also P2 on hand. That's exactly what you need in this situation. St. Clair, they get the flip that they needed, and they're only down by 10 points now, so... This has been their full resurgence on Skyline as they're just banging out these lanes. Spendies, he's going to be shot in the back there by Maka. And Gorilla now has to tend to that position. It's the way in for Sudor as nobody has a secure setup on this hard point. Even with those close spawns, Sudor has been at least doing a good job at limiting the time that St. Clair are getting here. And they're going to take one more shot at this one. Fury looking to push in towards the back. GRZ, one last shot together at this one. Can they find the kills? We'll Tyler gets shut down. It seems like GRZ, he's just going to respect the time. Yeah, he's going to respect the time. But actually, I'm looking at 68 pushing in. Maybe go for one last bit of scraps. 19 seconds of scraps. Hey, that's some good time to keep get, regain that lead. And in doing so, players down south as well. You've got Mac looking to try and gain that control into Kitchen. He's going to have that 1v1. Not going to work for him. And instead, Brandon's going to have that control. St. Clair, they've also got spawns for P4 as well. But they have a big force of Sudor pushing and making sure they're pushed right back into their spawns. Well, here we go. Sudor in control. Saints split spawn for them. So this is attention from Sudor on both planes. Maka, Tyler, they're finding the kills. Bendy up top. He's going to drop on down. Can he get the break? Swimming across the pool. Slides out. Swings. And that's going to be Tyler for the break. Saints are in. Still down by 20. Three kills in a row. Make it four. Nacho's going to clear it out. And the Saints, they are on. Soaking up some much needed time here. They have soaking up more. And they need to keep this going. And eventually, they need to push forward. Because Sudor is holding the line well. Though a spawn from one. Bendy's able to flip it. And thanks very much, says St. Clair. Because Gorilla's got three in the feed. This is what they want to see. It's only Mac that is the danger. Well, not anymore. He's now down. Yeah, GRZ going to be cleaned up there. Saints, this is what we saw last time. They love to set up a, a Gorilla all the way back towards the patio and see if you can anchor out on these spawns. Well, Frank's not there. He's up close. He went on five in a row, only able to get the RCXT. Probably would have loved to get an artillery strike, but it's allowed Sudor to get in from the front. And Saints flip out, so Bendy has to play his life. Some pressure's around. GRZ is going to clear him out. And it looks like Tyler inside still finding some value. Three down for the Saints. Brandon trying to make some heroics, but not able to break on in yet. Not yet, but they've got another wave of reinforcements coming in. They're going to try and go from the top. It's going to be a good start. Gorilla Slayer getting boat one apiece, and now they're able to push onto point. Spawns again been flipped. Sudor having the advantage of spawns, so they can quickly push back in when they get killed. And again, they keep throwing players, but the spawns again have been flipped in St. Clair. They're going to start to creep back and potentially get the lead. Now I can hear Saints outside getting loud off of that one. A triple kill roars them back into that point. Gorilla trying to cut off the help from the middle of the map. You have some presence up top and scrap time for Sudor. Again, just keeping a narrow margin of this lead. They don't have the better spawns this time. That's the difference of this third set is that the St. Clair Saints actually in the better position for that P2 rotation. So Sudor, they have to be careful. This is a fragile lead that they have. 
half. And Saints, they know that. So they're going to send some players up top. They get around them. They collapse on the point. It's a clean four down to get in towards this time. And Brandon, he wants more. He's trying to get aggressive towards that rooftop. Trying to cut off the rest of these players off the race. But I love this call from Saints. Because although you're spawning these players all the way out. Spawning them all around. It's just more time for the Saints. And they're trying to flip this lead. It doesn't happen just yet. But Saints, they got the right idea. They definitely have the right idea, but actually Sudor just spawned temporarily towards P2, so that's going to help them as well. And because of this split, it did allow Sudor to kind of sneak their way through on such a small map. They snuck their way onto that P2 side, but four down low is going to be the thorn in the rear end. Well, not for long as he gets taken out, and Sudor will assume control of the meeting room. Yeah, it helps a lot when you get those rogue spawns, I'll say. Skyline, it is... One of the map spawns of all time, but here for the Saints, Nacho looking to work alongside Bendy to see if they can work their way in. Bendy slides, he's shut down, it's a double kill from Sudor, and it looks like they've held the line here. They have held the line, and now they're in the 200. Now the mindset says that they are going to get this done, and theoretically, just out. I think it's just out from being able to complete it, so they're going to have to rotate next. They still have time to win this here. 30 seconds, that's going to be enough to put this one away. Sudor, fortunately, they're going to get broken there. So Saints, that is their way to prolong this map. 200 points to 224, and there's still 20 seconds for St. Clair to completely close this lead. Tyler's going to zip on up. Hello, goodbye. And now back in is Sudor. Scrap time for them. They're going to get close to winning this one out, but you think back to the last uh, series that we just saw for Saints Gold. They are not shy of making a comeback. They are definitely not shy. They'll go down to the whistle is fully blown. Brandon able to get that kill on long and that's going to massively help because now we can pinch number six. That's, that's going to be Mac. And now control fully on St. Clair Gold. And with good time, a little breather. Tyler jumps in, finds one. Can he find the second? He can, and that's a good kill. And now they're saying, Clay, I need to keep this alive. It's traded back and forth. Spawns have been flipped as well. Pseudo are spawning from the right, and they continue to apply the pressure onto point. Saints need to get in here if they want to keep this one away from Pseudo. But with these flip spawns, it's just hard to read where the attention is going. Three down for the Saints. Pseudo in 13 seconds for them to steal away the hard point. Map one from St. Clair's map choice. And St. Clair, they know that. So the Saints, they're grouping up for one last hit. Nacho, Gorilla, together! They break through with one second left. And they stay alive. But they know they gotta go. Tyler's here. And they even break through that. That is a critical kill they need. And spawns on their side as well. This is the opportunity they need. Third, 17, uh, 10 seconds to go. They've got to keep it going. Maka is going to be the first one to press inside. But they're hesitating. They're not pushing in. There's no confidence for them. As they jump on, three seconds, two. They jump in. Sudor, not quick, quick enough to get it. And Sudor Gaming, you can hear them outside. Both teams, Tyler's up on his feet. He's getting loud. The daps between teammates, and they know what they just did. They snuck away with one of St. Clair's best game modes that we've had all week long. The hard points, the controls, the Saints have been dominating there. But it hasn't been clean, and Sudor know that. They take the hard point away off of that skyline, and you got to give some props to Tyler Fury. 36 and 31, 26 of them non-traded. Absolutely disgusting stuff, but just keeping it at least back and forth enough that you know these teams just can never be satisfied with the leads that they have. No, you definitely can't. And also, the margins constantly. It was very much Sudor had the lead, most of the time. There was about one moment where St. Clair had that lead, and then when they did have, it then became a little pendulum, and then Sudor just found those scrap times, and I think that's what we mentioned throughout, was scrap times is what Sudor's gap stayed the way it was. I don't think, personally, I don't think they were the strongest necessarily on the route, on the uh, breaking, but they were able to get those scraps, and that's what helped. Just a little numbers adding up. Yeah, and that leads us into what could be Sudor Gaming doubling up here in this series. I mean, they take the map choice of St. Clair, and we're going to a protocol map two on the search and destroy. And this is where Sudor wanted to go. We just saw the Saints lose this in the series prior to it. It went all the way to around 11, but you could see that, you know, it goes to around 11. It, there were mistakes. There was issues for the Saints, and I think that with the Sudor team and how good they have been this weekend, how confident they've been, 
they're setting themselves up in a really good spot to potentially go up 2-0 in the series. I think so, yeah, but I'm not ruling out St. Clair. I'm not ruling them out the way that they have demonstrated and the way they can stay close. And also, Search and Destroy, completely different game mode. It is a different game mode entirely. So, yes, it looks even, but I've seen so often and so many times that once you start put yourself on Search and Destroy, one person goes a lot better than the other, or it can remain the same. There's so I would say there's too many question marks, too many mistakes on both sides, little ones at that to really say who's going to be taking it and if Sudor can go 2-0. And those Saints fundamentals, man, I'm sure they're going to be riding a high after what we've seen before. I mean, we know this team has been practicing search and they've been trying to at least grind through that search all last year. Back in MW3, they became quite the team in this game mode. But this weekend in general, I mean, that teamwork, even though it's been shown here and there, it hasn't always been translating into round wins. So we can see if Saints can harness a little bit of that MW3 energy, bring it here into B06. And on top of all of that, I mean, this is a loud game between both of them. You know that Tyler Fury is going to be shouting across the stage and you know that St. Clair are going to be shouting on back. So for the Saints, I love the, sh the trash talk that they're going to be showing here on that stage. And I imagine that's going to hype them up now for this game coming up here on Protocol. Absolutely. And off to the races, these fine gentlemen go as we get into the search and destroy on Protocol. Bomb, oh, that looks like it's going to go downstairs to the underground. And I'm not surprised. It's a common, common plant site if you want to go there. But immediately, St. Clair with two officers up. Yeah, set nade there from Gorilla. Mac is going to be spotted. Onto the helipad, four versus two, but Tyler Fury's pushed very aggressive, and he's going to sneak away. Brandon wasn't able to trade that out. And he's going to go back in here. Brandon spots him. The information for the Saints now still with an advantage, and it looks like they're just going to collapse there. Take the two-on-one, force Maka now into a one versus three, and something special now needs to happen for Sudor Gaming. Maka not getting the information off the bomb planter, but he should be able to stop it now. Takes down Bendy, and he sneaks away. Yeah, that's a great kill. I don't think it's going to be enough to deny the bomb as that's going to quickly go down. Is he going to use the little little nade spot? I think it's going to come in. Yes, the nade! Is it going to get anything? No, oh, Flapjacket. Just able to keep it alive. And this is where Maka now nasty has to go big. The early damage on the Gorillas and he dives out! Oh, Maka's feeling himself there. The 2v1 or the 1v3, so close to being completed, but Brandon holds strong here with the Jackal. And you saw that little reconnection there on the SMG. Big win there for the Saints. I think if there was ammo in his, in his SMG, I think that would have gone in the favor of Sudor. It was close. It, it was ridiculously close, but it is what it is. It is what it is. And uh, for Saints, I mean, that is too close for comfort after finding two picks off the get-go. That is a well-played round between Tyler Fury and Maka. So now onto the offense for Sudor. Let's see if they can trade things out. First blood coming out from Tyler. It's Nacho being caught out there. And that is full control of the B site. They've snuck through, at least in the building. They have snuck through. There's still a little more way to go because you got Bendy on the stairs. Going to find one and quickly dip away. And theoretically, he's got a teammate with him. That's going to be Brandon. They could trade positions and stay with the buddy system to try and bring back that gap. Buddy system, holding hands. That bomb's going down at B. Maka has coverage from behind on the back turret. And we've seen St. Clair use this again and again back in the lower semis. And Brandon's going to be caught by GRZ, who's just lurking. Brandy goes to stick the defuse. But that is a, that's a bold play to make in the situation that you find yourself. In a 1v3 on the site like that, I would not expect you to get away with the ninja defuse. And I, I didn't even realize that Maka could see him there. It's a, it's a very sneaky angle. It, it is a sneaky angle, but... I, the, the real time an Ninja Defuse can come in is if you've got a player to cover you. If you've got somebody behind on top of you to be the bodyguard or just looking out into sightline, yeah, go for the Defuse. But it, it's a it, you know, risk and reward, right? If it works, it works. That whole round for Sudor, I mean, what a play call. Just a crash through the doors. You know, you get the timing into the... the Defensive building, so use that. And seems like we're going to head on collision down low. Tyler, Tyler, oh my goodness! Cuts them down, Sudor. Absolutely shredding St. Clair to pieces in round three. 
That's the pace I want to see. They took the tempo, shoved the bar up, and made sure they went in. Tyler went head first, and thankfully, the trophy as well helped them for any utility that was thrown out. So that was the saving grace done perfectly. They just need quick rounds like that and to get their motivation back. Yeah. Saints still falling behind. That's two rounds lost and flipping back onto the defense. Last time, they just let Sudor Gaming crash through the front door. This time, you need to see a little bit more of a presence to stop that aggression from Sudor. And it seems like they're going to do that. Gorilla goes up top. Brandon down low into the spiral staircase. And it's going to be a two on three for the A side. The nade's going to take them up. And Brandon, just like Tyler in the round before, just connects with the nade and lines them up with the Amos. No trophy this time. That was the make and break. And Mac is going to finally get a return in the feed. But you've got to have your utility ready, and it's always the biggest piece of tool. But the bomb, well, that looks like it's going B. It's, it's hesitant, but I feel that's where they're looking. 50 seconds, lots of time here for Mac and GRZ. We saw back in round number one that Sudor almost pulled off a two versus four, so don't rule them out for a two versus three. 38 seconds down, it seems like Mac, with the bomb in hand, is going to take it around to the tower. So this leads you to believe it's going to be an A execute at some point or another, but GRZ is in trouble. Seems like he's getting tagged up, so Max on an island here to make some sort of a heroic play. Slides across, does it check his corner, finds the kill. Does he get traded? No, he still has a chance to fight this! GRC, five in a row. Bombs going down at A, and you have both members here. Mac and GRC for the two versus three. Gorilla, the gorilla slides out, but it's not going to be enough. St. Clair falling apart in the search and destroy. Hesitation. That's all it was. It was a hesitation to react to the death of his teammate. And then what happens? You just slide in and t flip on them. I, I, that shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen from Sudor to get two perfect kills like that. You can't write. You, you can't write this. It's even confusing too because you had the player right there to trade you out. I, I, it must have been some terrible, terrible COD timing for St. Clair. But right now you're down two rounds and you need to find an answer soon before that snowball continues to roll down the mountain. Sudor Gaming, a lot more of a passive setup. And St. Clair going to meet them with that slow pacing. It's Nacho with the connecting. Onto a nade there, first blood to the Saints. Yeah, and I love the slow tempo they're doing. I love the change of it because now it makes you th question where these players are. That nade doesn't necessarily give away where he was. You got the rough idea, but that nade can bounce around and go everywhere. So, question marks still arise. They're going to move over to the helipad. They look like they're going to go B. A little bit of gunshot's going to give away the location, but no rotation. They're not reacting to the gunshot. No, because they don't want to give up that pressure towards A just yet in case the bomb hasn't gone there. Nacho hasn't been spotted, but as soon as that rock is laid, the jig is up. And Saints now with a post plant four versus three. This is exactly what they had back in the round 11 in their series previous. So to see them in the same situation, you know that it can fall apart. Tyler is going to find the opening. That's the trade. And now the numbers for Sudor are here. Nacho and Gorilla playing together. Two versus two. Gorilla over towards P1. And GRZ is going to stick the defuse over the top. Nacho is going to drop down. He finds the player. Gorilla, one versus one. You got the time. And you got the one versus one in your hand. Gorilla is not going to let that one go. Two to three, the Saints pull it back. They did pull it back, and Tyler was trapped in the corner. There's nowhere you can go, and it's so awkward because you can't go right. You have to go into the gunfight. Ah, oh, worst place to be in, but where else do you go? You can't. One round difference now for the Saints. At least they do some damage control there, and it got scary. You got really scary in that round, especially considering you've lost a setup like that before without having that back turret pressure. But big ops to Gorilla, keeping the team alive here. And now onto the defense. Let's see if they can even it up. Gorilla's going to get the information. So Sudor doesn't meet the timing. He backs down, watches the front door, and he's calling to the players in the spiral staircase to come to his aid, see if they can back him up here. 
St. Clair need to put a stop to this aggression if they cross that, but they've fully given up the A site. They have given it up, but I don't think Sudor's read this, so they only know the danger that is in within the building as Tyler jumps in, he's gonna find one, says thank you very much, and they now have control of P3 building, and Tyler, a little bit of damage, he knows where the last by zip, as they were able to get that bomb down. 2v3. Bombs going down at B as well, so they have the player in the back as GRZ posted up. She is Tyler Fury just waiting for somebody to walk by him. Bendy does, so easy kill there. Gorilla, can he clutch up again for the Saints? He's got the gun of choice to rip GRZ off that back heady, but it's not going to be an easy gunfight. The shot! Oh! I thought for a second he'd take that kill, but Sudor just buffing that lead back up by two. Yeah, strong post-plant positioning as well. One by that Sam turret where we saw the kill happen, but one down by Heli. These are strong positions, and then everyone else, realistically, if there were more, could be anywhere. But those two are critical, and he knew he just couldn't land those shots, and it's so unfortunate. Headies, be headies. They're hard to hit. Yeah. Back into two round gap. Sudor, they're feeling good here. After winning that hard point, too, I said, this is a strong team in search. This is not somebody you just want to say it's going to fall over in any game mode whatsoever. So, this is where they're showing their strengths of potentially going up 2 0 against Saints Gold, only two rounds away. And back on the defense, it looks like they actually have a read on this one. Saints putting heavy pressure around the back. Gorilla's going to open up a kill onto Tyler Fury, and it looks like the follow up around the outside is going to back. Up and Sudor's meeting that with patience. Actually, it's a great fake. That was a beautiful fake. They forced the rotation off to A and they forced them back towards that B site. I think they've reread it and decided to quickly change direction. But the bomb that looks to be going down, not just yet. There has no, it is going to go down now. But Sudor, they need to get down, down underneath and get get their position back. The only thing that they are right now is down. Bad for some kills. There's a good one. Fury taking down Nacho, but Gorilla, who has just been absolutely killing it so far in this round, now looking for the ace. JRZ denies it. One versus two. 20 seconds left. He slides out. The aim is picked up. Back Spendy off the heady. Now it's his turn to jump up. The teammates swap. The nade connects, and St. Clair not going out without a fight. Yeah, I, I've got to point out earlier on the fake to go towards B. Then to change it over to A, that really messed up the positioning because originally Sudor were anchored. They were in position for A, and then next thing you know, they had a fear and a scare, moved to their back spawns, and then it allowed St. Clair to get into point. And it really only happens because Gorilla finds the kill onto Fury outside of that A site. So they know that Fury's been that player onto the A bomb. You know that he's the only person there. So with that bait play outside, it's just curtains for Sudor when they give that up to the Saints who are starting to catch on to the play style of this Sudor gaming team. First Bloods have been a battle on both sides. Nobody really dominating in that factor, but for the St. Clair Saints trying to play, put a defense under their belt, it is something that they desperately need. And with Bendy being pushed up this far, the rest of the Saints, they know it's either an outside push or they're trying their hand at B. And what also as well is both of them are playing inside the buildings as finally a break will come through and it will go in favor of Sudor. 3v2, but no pushing forward. They're taking this slow. They want to take their time because they got some, but they need more information. And that's why they're going to quickly rotate around right. the outside. But Gorilla's getting really aggressive and now he's in their spawns. That's bombed down. So Gorilla narrowly testing Sudor. 30 seconds, trying to put the chase on. He's going to be spotted. GRZ both know, and Gorilla just trying to play his life. Nobody's going to be able to really catch up, but Fury finally tracks him down. GRZ going to grab the bomb, and only 16 seconds. Nacho, he should spot that. These players have crossed, but it doesn't seem like he got it. Tyler's just playing in the middle of the map, and he has no idea. Nah, not, nothing really you can do in that. You were questioning if they're going to go down south. Look, checked over. No, no one was there. Naturally, you're going to drop back in Tyler. Well, he played He played the right decision. You could either play ahead, be the guy who scouts ahead, look for the Sam turret if someone is there, or do you stay back, allow the bomb planter to be the one, to be the, uh, to be the head, and you defend the rear, and it's the perfect decision for this situation. You could have gone either way. Yeah, and... This is their chance to go up 2-0. Sudor, 5-3 on protocol S&D. They chose this map. 
It wanted to go here. And I can see why. Picture perfect plays coming out from Tyler Fury. Catching timing after timing. Bendy, C9 in hand. I was talking to him. He says he likes this gun because he usually finds himself in that 17 meter radius. And that's where the C9 catches you. And it rips you apart. But it does it if you can't read these players. And Tyler Fury, four in a row. 12 and six. Ah, you gotta love that four and six is a dominant number, but look at it's twelve and twelve and six actually. Uh, thirteen, Make it 13. And six. He is frying right now. He's feeling confident with this, and in doing so, no progression from the bomb as they are still stuck with their spawns. Still lots of time here for the Saints. Two versus three. It's not done just yet, but that's going to make it even harder. Nacho in a one versus three. Gorilla not able to stay alive. And up top, watching over the outside. Sudor gaming. They put St. Clair in the blender in search and destroy. And they are cruising themselves through the series now. They are feeling good. Oh, they're on the brink to make this a 3-0. Oh, control will be next. But I tell you what, Sudor making the right decisions, right time. One or two wrong plays, which, of course, is respe reflected within the scoreline. But 9 out of 10, their recovery from these small mistakes they do is quick, instant. And that communication between them is strong. It's not like that. I mean, when you have players, too, that are just clutching up in so many ways. One versus twos, one versus threes, almost a 1v4. It just seems like this Sudor gaming team just get, is getting away with a lot on the map. And St. Clair, they need to find an answer pretty soon. We got red card control coming up soon and it is St. Clair looking for the reverse sweep we'll see you after this quick break
Welcome back, guys. Short little break, but we're into the control on on red card. Sudor Gaming leading the series 2-0 after taking what seemed like a pretty comfortable search and destroy on protocol. And now, for the Saints, they're looking to reverse sweep their way back into this series with themselves on offense, it seems, for the first round. Yeah, and they're already going to the club side control, and they're trying to get that locked down. But I'm looking at number seven. That's GRZ going to be pushing from the rear. I don't know if they've recognized this push coming in. No, it does not look like they have. And it, it's GRZ and only able to find the one kill. Maka is going to go down as well, but GRZ luckily turning things around with a second one. Seal progress over towards A. Everybody looking over towards B off that start. Brandon soaking up that time. The double stack was there, but is the progress going to be good enough to put it away? The second tick is in. Brandon still there. Nacho coming to stack it with him and St. Clair with this call just putting the time away this should be a capture and St. Clair turning around their offensive round. What I love is they started to go down to that club side uh, control point then they essentially got all of Sudor to really focus down there freed up the stage side control and in doing so able to capture it and now they're back on the point once again. Yeah Bendy pushed off nobody knows this one the trigger discipline to get one but is he find a Second one thinks Tyler Fury's down low. Not able to snap in time. So damage control for Sudor. They find the two kills. They relieve some pressure here. Forcing Maka's not able to find anything. But Tyler gets the info. Onto the player pushing into him. Kills off Brandon. That should slow the roll for a second. 56 seconds left. Plenty of time still. Plenty of time for St. Clair to push back in. But it's a very park the bus situation from Sudor. They're playing extremely defensive. No roaming just yet. No breakages. Nothing to give them a confidence as they continue just to take St. Clair one by one. It seems like that's working for them. The kills just continue to flow for Sudor. St. Clair struggling to find a way in. Nacho puts together a quick double kill, but even that's not enough to fully break through. The close spawns should be able to reinforce this one, and you still have Mac maybe to find a couple kills. It's GRZ there to finish off Brandon, and it's Gorilla keeping St. Clair in at 20 seconds, nine lives, playing six, cut down to eight, no respawns for Sudor, and St. Clair, they're on the point. They're on the point. They could get this done and dusted as they are capturing four lives for Sudor. You've got to play every life to the T, Bendy says thank you very much. He just dives right on out there. Brandon Bendy not able to kill off the rest of them. One left. It's Tyler Fury in a one versus five. And although it's a 1v1 on point, he can't get that first kill to kick it off. St. Clair. Balance it back after losing the search and destroy, taking round one here in the control. What's a bonus as well? It's an attacking round. Yeah. No normally for a lot of these maps, and especially a lot of the controls, attacking is the hardest. But from a lot of the games we've been seeing here on Red Card, it's actually okay. It's, it's doable. A, it's a lot easier to win this attacking round with the amount of space you can play with. But it was like Invasion from MW3. A lot of the time, I would say there is a lot more possibility of winning. There is but it just all comes down to getting those kills. And for St. Clair, they did a good job at, like you said, baiting out towards B at the start, getting Brandon over towards that A zone. It started to kick things off with some real progression. Six segments. We know that this time. We don't need to see the progress to see what they got because they won on offense. <laughs> so that's just making our job easier. Sudor now looking to replicate that. Not really any offense over towards B. Just one player with a late hit, but it's allowing St. Clair through the middle of the map. They got a flank already set up, and they have no idea. St. Clair, they hit this one. They clear out Sudor, and it's a clean three down. You look at where Maka is. Maka is already on point, so while the attention again has been focused up towards the stage, slow progression has been going at the club, and he will continue to stay finally being contested, and the reinforcements from Sudor is soon to come in. Yeah, Maka's going to slide up. He's just waiting for some help, but Bendy's already quickly flanking this one. Now the damage is enough to take them down. Gorilla finishes off Tyler Fury. Bendy, oh, don't do it to him. I thought for a second, but Maka, or GRZ, not going to allow that one. So 45 seconds, Sudor is still with no progress on either side. No, I think there was one tick. No, I might be mistaken, but nonetheless, they they were close. They was by mere margins. And now, eventually, Sudor can go back to the stage. You can't actually go underneath the stage. You actually have to be on top. So if one was going low, you have to get back on top. Maka yeah, on the no point. stack here. Bendy just looking for an angle, tagging him up. You got Brandon closing the gap there. And 
Seems like they're able to take that pressure off of A, so time dwindling to 30 seconds. Brandon through the middle of the map. He's going to be caught in no man's land, so GRC going to cut that first player down. Gorilla watching the push over towards B. Should be communicating that there is no pressure here just yet, but he's going to spot them. The shot's in the back. Gorilla has to reload. Tyler Fury, he's low. 9 HP, but he's going to stop the clock at 11 seconds. It's going to be a stack as well. Two on point, and that's going to massively help with time. 11 seconds left on the clock. Progression, finally. One's gone through. They need another two, but the reinforcements from St. Clair are coming in. And they touch. That's two ticks. Are they just going to give this one up? No, the ankle's out, and they're just waiting for Nacho to pinch it. Now on A. Right now, Sudo are trying to extend this as long as they can. Any progress is good progress when you're down six ticks, and there it is. Three segments so far for Sudo in total. One at A. GRC calling for the help from the rest of the team, and it looks like the help just slowly getting there. St. Clair already flanking it out. GRC's got to hop out. It's only 11 seconds. You cannot give this one up. You cannot step off the time, but it's not your choice. St. Clair take you down. They eliminate you off the objective, and it looks like they're going to be able to put away a defensive round. Four ticks. No, not... Oh, I was going to say, not done as he just stepped on for a brief second. Two each. They just couldn't co get the final tick going. I believe Clubhouse, we don't have the, the progress bar, but that looked to be near to be done. From rough maths, that is. But there's potential. If they can defend this next round, there's a potential for an attacking win on Sudor's side. There is, but I mean... With the way that Saints are playing here in this respawn, it's a leg up from what we've seen back on that hard point. It's very composed. The, the overextensions that they keep doing, flank on flank on flank, and it doesn't seem like Sudor is able to get a read on some of these players. They're leaving lanes open, and you ne need to start seeing that teamwork come out from Sudor in this control if they want to start putting some rounds on and lead into a potential 3-0 sweep. Saints are doing everything right to extend this series to four. It could be a potential because a lot of the teams here have said they've not practiced control. So could this be another team that have struggled and not put in the work on that control side? That's a question we'll have to ask later. But I tell you what, St. Clair, they're looking confident. They're already on point. They are double stack as well. So this progress is going to go fast. Already one tick. And they won on offense. So this is just kind of bleeding out Sudor. They need to start to find some angles here. No kills coming through. They're not ripping him off the head. He's bending some good shots there with the C9. The contention in from the top. Tyler Fury's going to save the day. But is it going to be enough? There's still some bodies here for St. Clair. And it's not over just yet. Nacho still alive. Finding the kills. But not able to finish off the rest. Two ticks done, but I definitely was close to finishing. Now they're going to flip the position, go north, try and apply that pressure. But look immediately, Sudor read it like a book, and they rotated onto point and clearing them up. It's a good difference. Last time in the offense, uh, St. Clair were just able to bounce from point to point. This time, Sudor meets them there. They match them with that speed and aggression. And uh, I don't think St. Clair really prepared for that one over towards A. So finally, Sudor, they got a little bit of a lapse here. And they're starting to gain a, a lead in lives. Only three, but still is quite a lot when you're considering there's only 35 seconds left. You're feeling good here if you're Sudor on defense. And on top of that, they're also starting the spawn traps. It doesn't feel as deep, but it is deep enough. But Gorilla... He wants to, he could commit to using the Hellstorm. He could put that down, but do you want to use it here or do you want to save it for another round, even potentially if this goes to round five? Well, it seems with another wave of kills coming through, I'm pretty sure that is going to be a shelved streak for the next round. Sudor Gaming finally getting some fire underneath them in this one. They give up those two ticks over towards B, but that is a successful defense if I've ever seen it. Finally putting themselves on the board. That should be the segments around 8 to 4 in favor of St. Clair six after four. that one. 6 to 4. 8 4. They got two ticks there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, Sudor Gaming in this one, if you're looking at maybe coming away with a defense in that last round, it's just looking towards stacking a zone, stacking it fast, getting it captured, and then worrying about the next one later. They got to be better at finishing off those, uh, those segments. Oh, absolutely. They definitely need to full commit and just keep the bodies going. But then at the same time, if you keep throwing the bodies, going to that next point, you don't have the lives advantage that you would have walked into. So... Yes, go and commit, but at the same time, like, I, I, 
I would be hesitant. I'd like to take advantage of those spawns, try and catch them off guard. But nonetheless, we're going outside again. We're going towards that stage. I don't mind this from Sudor Gaming at all, but they need to find the kills to back it. Bendy's underneath. He's being a little slippery snake here. He's going to slide out. He takes that early damage, but the pre-fire is just going to give GRZ that chance. So Mac extends out eight in a row, almost at the artillery strike and the Hellstorm. One more kill on the zone. Should be able to net him the score streaks, but he is struggling to get it down, and Nacho's going to sneak around and stop him from getting those streaks. Yeah, and no tick as well, so they're still on 0-0, zero, zero, and it's back to square one with an aggressive front for St. Clair. So you've got to fight through St. Clair and get back onto point. But a little breakage may come through as you can see Gorilla holding point and might start to be the thorn in the rear end of Pseudo's progression. Gorilla has been a thorn throughout this entire game. He is just anchoring down this B zone and making it near impossible for Sudor to attack this at full strength. Tyler's trying to wait for the rest of the team to get here. Gorilla's going to go down, but now it's Bendy's turn to start this flank. He's going to be working it as fast as possible. You lose that on Brandon, but now Bendy just trying to hit this at the right time. Nacho with the front door, knocking on in, but not able to knock them over. Gorilla helps him out. The stack isn't here, and in fact, the time just continues to burn. Only 17 seconds. It was a stack, but it just went away quickly. Great defense from St. Clair. They're going to go north, and it's going to be Tyler Fury against Slayer. Slayer's the only one alive, just on the edge. No points if you're underneath, remember. You've got to be on top. Tyler gets caught out, and now Gorilla trying to do what he can to allow the reinforcements to come in. Oh, it's a win here if you're suited, or it's, oh, it's not a round or a game win or a map win at all. This is defense for St. Clair holding strong. Progress over towards B. You have Tyler Fury alone. Everybody else extending onto that A zone. Four seconds. Somebody's got a touch and Tyler, he gets there just in time. So it doesn't really matter here what ticks you get. You have to win this offense to extend it to a round five. They need to win it. It's one apiece on both sides. You've got to commit to one site and one site only. But look at the way St. Clair are. They're literally closing in like, an, uh, like a shark on its prey. Closing, just squeezing Sudor out. But there's nothing that they can do because Sudor keeps Tyler. himself alive. There's two seconds left. Can anybody touch there? It's going to be close, but no. Sudor. Dropping a map here in the best of five. The first one they've lost. And that is the control going over towards the St. Clair Gold team. As now this is their first step on many steps for their way back into a reverse sweep. Yeah, and this is not the first time they've done it. They've did it against, uh, I believe it was Team 6. They reverse swept. They were in this position before. They were 2-0 down and then just came all the way back. They need another story like that, and it's very, very much possible. Uh, it is possible. I'm loving right now the energy that the Saints Gold team has been giving us. It really shows that no matter how good they are or how far behind they are, they're still good enough to keep this one going, and they're in the control. We see that this team has been good. We kind of talked about their Skyline control at the start when we were looking towards that Skyline hard point, and that Skyline control kind of reflects in control in general. This, still, this team is just built for this game mode. They were good back in the CCL, back in NACE last season. Uh, in MW3, and it's just because you got players like Bendy and Nacho who like to go rogue. Those SMGs who roam, especially on a map like Red Card, which is wide open, and with a team like Sudor who's going to allow you to run those routes, with it being just available, they're going to punish you at that. And it, it really helps when Frank's also locking down those points. Gorilla was an absolute anchor over towards B whenever they were on defense. Also, to make a point, they didn't even have to use their, uh, their uh, score streaks on that. They had Not one in all. the back pocket. They could have used it, but it's a show of element of confidence. It's a mild kind of flex to have the score streak there, not deploy it. Of course, the opposition won't fully know unless your IGL's really counting the numbers, but it's still a flex to have. And with that momentum, with a win back in their, in their pockets, that's the momentum. They need to look yeah. into the next one and go, right, we can do this. We're not getting sweeped anymore. Let's take this home on the next map. And the next map is going to be a little bit of a doozy for the Saints because it's a vault hardpoint. And we saw what they were like against Lisk. It was neck and neck all towards the end. They were down, I'm pretty sure, 80 points at one point mm. in the first set of rotations. Lisk came out strong, and the Saints really struggled at getting those rotations and actually locking down those hard points. P4 was an issue. I think both teams were struggling at breaking P4. So for Saints, 
they allow Vault to sneak in now again, and we know they were struggling last time, so is what kind of changes are they going to be making heading into this map number four? I think one thing is going to be certain. they got to look towards one of their leaders. I think Frank is a good person to look at. He's a very vocal guy, very controlled. I mean, he's the S&D coach of this team when uh, he's not uh, on the roster itself. So you know he's got the brains to lead them. It's listening to the IGL, rotating when you need to, and actually getting into those hard points and setting up. Absolutely. You've got to be listening to your entire team. You've got to be making sure the communication is there, but also being knowing like when to attack as well, because even though you may have the strategies when you don't have the point, how do you attack? When do you attack? Because a lot of times we do see a lot of rogue players, the lurkers go around, they're creating that movement, trying to do those spawns and then push straight in. And that can cause problems because now you don't have that reinforcement. You've given away your position and potentially given away the strategy as well. I will say, I mean, there's one thing for certain for Saints fans in the venue and for Saints fans who are watching this, you can never count this team out. They went to the wire on Vault. They walked away with Vault hard points, and they're going to be feeling good now winning off on that control. So see if they can go back to back. Send us to a map number five. Sudar looking to end it here. And we're kicking things off with Mac, who just gets run down by the Saints. Bendy with the C9 just, oh, I love seeing him with this gun. It kills so fast. And already spawns have been flipped already in favor of St. Clair. Off the back. First battle, they've done that. That's a great start for them. They just need to now maintain it and keep an eye on Maka because he's coming from the side and could be a great damage here. No Fury, he's going to slide through. Want some time if you're Sudor. You finally get one second on the board, but you're looking for the rest of it. Still 20 seconds to secure. And you don't want to get over aggressive here if you're Sudor. I'd say you're going to try to test the Saints here. But if you get sent off the respawn, then that's just going to be Bendy to start this flank and to pick you apart yet again. One person in behind enemy lines. The Saints are collapsing over towards number seven. Kill should be coming through eventually. And yet, Mac is going to be spotted. But it is Saints. That rotation over towards P2 should be secured just yet, but it's not as clean as they would have liked. It's not. There was a good amount of time where they did have GRZ up by that by the balcony, trying to keep everybody away, but if you're going to do that, try and get the distraction, you've got to make sure your team's there. Again, to come in, and I mentioned this before we went in here, attacking in a place, you've got to have the reinforcements. Split spawn for Pseudo or Saints got to be careful. They're not going to read this at all, and Tyler Fury just not able to get those shots off right away. You take the player out from behind. Now Bendy looking forward with the Amos looking down these long lines of sight. It seems impossible for Sudor to cut this gap without going through the inside. And that's what Mac does, but only able to find two. States in still in control of the time. The lead now up 47 and counting. Sudor, gotta look to the rotation. They are going to be looking for it, but at the same time, P3, you can spawn from both sides and be fairly even, but they're looking ahead. A game of chess, you don't play the piece that's going to make the mill win instantly. You've got to play ahead, and that's why St. Clair's gone south. They've gone through driveway and trying to force the spawns to flip. That's going to be Gorilla also going to bottom up. We'll battle on both sides here. Bendy tries to slide in. Still worried about Gorilla behind. I actually think they forgot about Gorilla here, and that's going to make uh, punish Maka on the slide. So three go down for Sudo. Our Saints fight their way from the front, and they make their way in, and the spawn flip as well with a little bit of a rogue one from the Saints. Things are about to get a little weird. It really is, especially when you've got three spawning and one. No, they've been flipped again. So St. Clair are spawning from the right side. No, Sudor are spawning from the right side. We said Skyline had a bit of questionable spawns, but they're a little questionable here. But nonetheless, Sudor from the right, and they do need to quick get these spawn flips coming through. I like this from Tyler. Just trying to be sneaky here. Looks like the Saints know that somebody is missing. Doors open, and it looks like he's going to take that opportunity, but the communication there for Brandon lets Bendy know the three, two of them locked down a triple kill. Oh, make it all four, and Saints, where I said they struggled at getting over towards P4 in their last series. Now they have the full setup. They love to see if you're a Saints fan wishing for this game number five. Everything going right for them now in these rotations. It's going everything they needed. They're happy with it. They're locked down. It almost looks like Sudo can't make their way through. No matter if they go from south, if they go from north, nothing is going through. But finally, a break could come in. They're stacked on the outside. An opening comes through, but they need to commit. They need to lock. 
and they've got the lock for now. Very back and forth right now, but Sudor still trailing by, it seems like, around 40 points. Going to the second set of rotations, Sudor still spotting towards the right side of the map. It seems at least one player does. It's Tyler Fury. He has a chance to deal some big damage here onto the next set of hills, but it's going to be chaotic. Nothing is really solidified just yet, and you still have the kills flowing for the Saints. So Sudor, they are all over the place. They're scattered right now, and they need to find some time to come together soon. It's, it's almost like the plan they try and execute just gets countered every single time. They're running on the back foot here, trying to play catch up. And every time they get an opportunity, immediately St. Clair have something to respond exactly like what Brandon is doing with Abuseful 2. Is there three in the question? Not just yet, but it'll be Bendy to help out. Everybody's just falling for Sudor Gaming. Fortunately enough, Saints are getting a lot of time here and Sudor did get that initial, so... The lead is smaller than what it was when this hill first came active, but, and they still have the back spawns as well. St. Clair, they get back in for the scrap time, and you have to be careful here not to allow the Saints to push any further. Tyler looking the wrong way, and Bendy's going to find two. Suddenly, those spawns flipped out yet again, and Sudor just continue to find themselves in troublesome spots. Mac had the right idea. Mac had positioned himself on L. He had positioned himself ready for the flip, but it just didn't come through. But now, with St. Clair parking the bus, they're all bunched together. This could be dangerous. Could be. Bendy just waiting. He's got some support, too. Double kill from the Saints, and they lock things down. Tyler Fury spawns in the back, but that's a heads-up play from Gorilla to read it, and Gorilla a second one, so... St. Clair's lead, it has grown exponentially across these, this hill. They are flowing on vault. Gorilla on the four streak as well. One after the other after the other. He's found his rhythm anchoring. Make that five. He is one away from a hellstorm. And he's going to be two away from a hellstorm. So he will be ready. Yeah, a couple kills now for the score streaks. It doesn't seem like Gorilla are getting them as clean as could be. As... Those eliminations sometimes don't always count for your own kills. So he is racking up the score. Doesn't seem like he was able to get that strike in the end. And this lead for Sudor Gaming, it is down double. St. Clair 167 to 87 now with this third hill active. Sudor need to fish out these last couple players. And they need to slay out, locking things down and give some support to the players who are looking for the objective. Sudor spawning from the right side. So this is not going to help them for P4. But the fight amongst the top of art has been won by St. Clair. But St. Clair's been spawned out. They're now spawning from the right. So maybe there is a little bit of luck for Sudor to gain something back onto the next point. They just need to hold position and not give an inch of space away. I don't think considered you're down 174 to 101 right now and you're going to get the scrap time if you're the saints but super gaming are one hill away from finding themselves back into it unfortunately they're just letting saints go rogue and make some trick plays brandon sneaks in behind and he's got nacho to back him up they hit them with the one-two punch and they just blew up the setup from sudor out of nowhere they really have. They keep. They just keep finding the gaps, and that's all it is. It's not even like it's a big map. They just find the little sneaky areas where it's not being covered, and eventually they can just push in and have their own own, own party there. GRZ pushes in, can't do anything, but eventually, sometime, a little bit of time to keep Sudor in this game. Well, Fury's gonna finally break in for Sudor. Thirty seconds on the clock. It's doesn't have the help for the player up top, and tagged up Nacho is a dead Nacho after the second player drops on down to assist. Sudor on scrap time yet again, but scrap time's just not enough. It's not going to cut it right now for Sudor Gaming. They're again going to lose the rotations here, and with that, Sudor have to fight from the front. They have to figure out a way to just slay themselves through, but that just hasn't been enough so far on this map. It really hasn't, and it's, it, there, there needs to be a new strategy, a, a last-minute call, a last-minute change of mentality on how to approach it, but I tell you what, that's looking a bit more promising, a little bit more time. Oh, I spoke too soon. Seems Comtase's curse is a thing. It really is. Well, Saints... Doesn't seem like you can win on this hill, but again, any second you get is just closer to that finish line, closer to that map number five to maybe get another reverse sweep here in the TXP number four. And in the lower semifinals, that would be insane with your sister team waiting for you. 
back in the finals. Both of these teams lost to Saints Green at one point or another in the bracket, and both of them want their revenge. They both definitely want that, and Sudor have a vantage for next hill. They do need this scrap time, though. They need every second here, because eight seconds would really close the door and get the things a lot closer for St. Clair. However, Sudor, they've got, they've got spawns, They've got points, but look how aggressive St. Clair are pushing in, and they're Big looking to win flip it. From Gorilla in the back. That's going to be able to draw some spawns away. That's going to create a, quite a mix, and Bendy takes advantage of that. 32 and 18. Bendy into the hard point. 224 and counting for the Saints. Somebody's got to break in, but Bendy holds the door, and the kills just continue to flow. Brandon on the front line. 18 seconds. Everybody from Sudor off the respawn, and they got. Gotta hustle. This is it for Sudor on Vault. And this could be the map five on the menu. Nacho watching across. The kill's coming through. Nobody's gonna touch it. St. Clair do it again. Forcing a game five and a chance to reverse sweep. Oh. That's all we can say, that the energy these guys keep bringing in, even when you're down in the dumps, you don't give in, and they are making that reverse sweep alive, and it's only a skyline away, a skyline hard point to do it. You can see Jammer in behind already has his jacket on. He is He's playing the favorites right now. I see him in the Saints <laughs> jacket behind that desk. I'm, I'm going to have to talk to him later. I, I thought the person running the event was supposed to be non-biased, but uh, no, I'm just giving him a hard time. <laughs> uh, game five. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe that Saints goal just have that composure in them, but the trust. These guys have been playing together for a very, very long time, whether it's been locals, any tournament in challengers or collegiate call of duty and that this is a team that you never want to give up on and i'm excited for what is to come it's going to be a skyline search and destroy right after this break folks
And it's time for the chance at redemption for both of these teams. Both have met the Saints Green squad. Both have fallen in 3-0 fashions. And with the game five here, not only is St. Clair Gold looking to reverse sweep, but they're looking for that chance to face their sister team again. We're on Skyline Search and Destroy, and it looks like the bomb's down at A. Yeah, and an immediate start was just shaping up, squaring up, trying to understand how they're going to push, how you're going to play on such a small map. Not a lot of room to rotate, but look at seven. GRZ trying to flip the spawns. Yeah, Gorilla's going to spot that one out. One versus two. GRZ, last live or Mac on screen here. Going to play behind the ball, but Gorilla has been frying today. He is so impressive on the Saints. And not only is he going to find the player trying to hit that flank, but he catches Mac as well, just providing support to his teammate. Yeah, he's just been a pure anchor. That's all he's been doing for, for his team. He anchored in control, he's anchored in hard point, and it's looking like that's continuing into S&D. Brilliant work. They didn't allow any of wide rotations to come through. Clean. Clean is all you can say from St. Clair. And it's really not surprising, too, from Gorilla, because Skyline's one of those maps. It's just, you look to bang it out, and try to hit the sites as hard as you can. And it's a small map in that, so you can get on flanks as fast as you can. Nacho catches a timing through mid. That is a quick double kill from the Saints. He's going to regen, and he hightails it out of there. <laughs> Easy lineup. Easy lineup for him. And they, they can now still sit back. They can sit patiently because they know they're going to have to push into those sites as the bomb is left out in the open. Quick sneak away, and good. Plant could go in. That thing on protocol search and destroy... Pseudo Gaming, they were ice cold in the clutch scenarios, but a two versus four this time, you get caught if you're Maka, and it leaves Mac in a 1v4 scenario. Bomb down so far away as well. You got to go through the bomb site just to get it, and it's going to be hard to cross through mid. So many eyes on these lanes. Saints going to have two members pushed on towards that rooftop. Mac with 35 seconds. He's just looking for anything. That could be traded over. Some timing there onto Gorilla, and there's a kill back, but 27 seconds to get not only a couple more kills, but grab the bomb, get it planted, and try your hand at a 1v4. It's just too much to do. It, on this map, it's a lot harder. If, if it was something like Red Card or, uh, or any other map, to be honest, Vault, there's a bit more space to go and get those 1v1s, draw out players, have those easier opportunities. But a map like this, once you get one kill, you've already given away your position and immediate rotations, immediate guns are pointed towards your area. You just sound the sirens and... I think the Saints there, they knew that they had that one in the bag. Two quick rounds, and I'm surprised because Sudor are back on that protocol search. They were lights out. They came off to pretty strong lead, and Saints were seemingly struggling there. This time, map five is the Saints' choice of search, and it's definitely showing a lot better. But this time around, round three, GRZ, first blood into Bendy, quickly traded there, but it's back and forth, and it's numbers still for Sudor Gaming. And I tell you what, First Blood has gone into their advantage, and Tyler Fury is going to be wrapping all the way around the rear. No, he's going to go back in towards mid. He could have had the rear spawn to his advantage. He could have, but he did it, and that's going to be the perfect flank there from Tyler Fury. He went all the way underneath. He was waiting for the rest of his team to catch that timing off the execute, and as soon as his team hits that bomb site, that's go time to open up the shelves and quickly flank onto that zone. It's a good play. It's a really good play, and nonetheless, brings a point back on the board you stop that momentum from saints and in doing so now you can say look points on the board let's get our heads together we can do this here it's game five one round at a time one step at a time you just got to breathe your way through it you don't want to get ahead of yourself because it's an easy deal i mean you'll quickly see this game get out of hand but saints back on the defense attacking for sudor they're going to take things to the catwalk and Last time they got doubled up, they got lined up. This time it looks like the Saints are getting forced off. The trophy's going to protect them, and Bendy, full HP. He finds that first blood quickly traded by GRZ, but it is Sudor Gaming already threatening to get that bomb down, and Bendy, the timing there pays off, and everybody just collapses right back into it. So Saints, they disengage. But they hit it even harder. Yeah, it's all tempo. Sudor decided, you know what? We're cranking this tempo to go fast. Let's see if we can catch them off guard. But St. Clair, they, they planned to be slow. They planned for Sudor to walk into their lines. They fell into the trap. It was a trap, as they said in Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, they, they catch the kinetic energy there. They just throw it right back at them. I love it. 
from Saints, um, especially considering you have trophies there, Sudor. If you don't connect on those nades, you got to start thinking maybe we don't have the full uh, capabilities of hitting this together. And they're just throwing themselves at full HP members, just holding down irons. Yeah, and look, once again, they're playing it slow, and they're even attacking here. So they're allowing the aggression from Sudor to go through as Brandon will get that first pick. And time is of essence. I mean, they've got a minute 20 to play with, so why not slow it down on the CQB map, see what information you can get, and see where you can push up on the later and more pressured time. And Tyler Fury's underground, so just looking to be a little sneaky. But uh, Saints are thinking of other things. The RCXD is going to be leading them over towards the B-bomb. Nacho just clearing out Plat, everything that they can. Maybe trying to fish for a kill, but it doesn't seem like anybody's going to be spotted there. Player number eight's just going to run away, and he's going to blow that up. So bomb down in the meeting room, and so that's the freest kill I've ever seen for Nacho. And it should have been. It really should have been a kill there, but it just did not happen for Mac. And, well, that's just allowed a free advantage and an opportunity for St. Clair to surround the bomb site. Two on three. Gorilla. Looking to protect this bomb site, and he's going to find the timing there to figure out where these Sudor players are. And that's a tough one for Sudor. These rounds have been going by fast, and I don't know if that's just Skyline or if that's the way that these teams are playing it. I find that Sudor are always just losing out on these initial duels, giving up the bomb sites. I want to start to see them post up on these power positions and actually fight for these initial tanks because as soon as they do get to the bomb site, it seems like they're giving so much away just to reach that that as soon as they it's done, they cannot use any of their tacticals or lethals to retake the sites. Honestly, I want to see Su Sudor slow down. I think that's the problem that we're seeing is that aggression is going against them because St. Clair has slowed down themselves. Slow it down, see how it feels. And actually, it's almost like they listen to me, actually, as two will fall, and it's working. Slow pace is working. Yeah, St. Clair pick up the pacing there, and uh, they get caught in the irons. Gorilla's still up top, and... Still potential for Clutch here. Are they going to read a third flank? And yeah, they do. PRZ's going to turn around and find that kill. And it has been good so far for Sudor. Bomb's going down at A. Brandon in a one versus three. He's got the Amos in hand. So this is a very, very good chance for Brandon to maybe rip one of these guys off the headies. But as soon as he gives himself away with 30 seconds left, this is... Uh, uh, this is going to be a tough one to break. you gotta, you got to rush in. you got to make sure you got every kill and not lose an ounce of health. Well, that's a good start if you're Brandon because he didn't lose an ounce of health. But 15 seconds left on the clock. All that all Saint, uh, Sudor need to do is just hold that angle, not allow Brandon to get on. It's past 7.5. The round is theirs. Yeah, the round's done. It's just kills for Brandon. At least he comes away with the kills. That's pretty fancy, honestly. And tippable too for this player but it's another round for Sudor and that's the important thing for this team they need to start getting some rounds under their board they are three down now two down against the Saints and it's just one step at a time here so backing things back onto the defense for Sudor this is where I kind of want to start to see them fighting for these initial first bloods let's see if they can go up towards the uh, piano staircase and try to catch some timing on these Saints players but Branded this time, he's going to bring out the RCXD. Well, bonus for St. Clair as well. If they can win this map, this will be the second time they will be reverse sweeping. So a major, major upset in the score lines as well as the RCXD. No way! It was successful. Oh, you don't usually see that happen. I'm surprised. People are usually good at keeping away from those RCXDs, but here's a play from Nacho, and Tyler's been sitting here for the past couple of rounds just waiting for somebody to make this play, and there it is. The trade is in for Sudor, and Tyler just waiting patiently round after round. It finally pays off. Bomb's going to go down on to the A site by Kitching, and the trophy also down, so that's going to massively help. No nays, no checking to see if anyone's around. So Sudor at the disadvantage here even though the lives are all the same. You have one player from Saints just posted up way in the back. That's Bendy. Just clearing out, making sure that there's no flanks. Sudor's hitting this from the front. Everybody together. Two of them up top, and they're just going to drop on down. Bendy just lines them all up top. He finds them, takes the aggression, and shuts down Sudor before they even have a chance at sniffing the site. Map point, and again... 
or Bendy just being at the top, be making sure the rotation did not come through from Wood. It was exactly what you needed. It reverse sweep territory. You, if you are pseudo, you've got to go perfect from here onwards. But I'm going to be real here. I don't think it's going to happen. It's early to call. But it, it's not looking strong. No matter. It just seems like Sudor has run out of gas here. Expending everything in the first two maps. They just haven't looked the same across the control, the second hard point. And even now in the search and destroy, this looks like a totally different team. The shot's coming through. Aggression from Sudor. Up the zip goes Gorilla. He's going to try to fend them off. But instead, it's just GRZ running him over. A trade happens, but it's a three on three. Saints going to take the zip, see if they meet them. The timing is out. The bomb's still not planted. And Tyler just lines them all up. One versus one. Brandon has the bomb down. And he can play his life. He can absolutely. They go to opposite sides. A little breather. 50 seconds on the clock. So there's time. There's time for both sides. Just He's got to the Hellstorm. Work things out. And yeah, a lot of crews and uh, uh, Hellstorms and score streaks on his side. But it's inside. The point is inside as well. So do you want to use that at this point? He's fully flipped the map all around the world. Posted up on P1. You haven't moved an itch if you're GRZ. And GRZ is a little bit of a newer player when it comes down to the scene, so this is territory that I'm sure he's not used to. However, on the other side, Brandon, he's going to find the timing. The shots are out. GRZ goes for the reach out with a pistol, and he does not read it right. And Brandon stepping up, getting loud for St. Clair as they get their second reverse sweep here at TXP. Oh, I can, I can hear that from within here. The roar from St. Clair. It's going to be a double St. Clair battle. They faced them before. It was a 3-0 sweep. But they've gone through everybody, fought tooth and nail to get to where they are. I don't think it's going to be a sweep this time. A disappointment on the faces of the players from Sudor Gaming. What a run they had today on Sunday. I mean, knocking down... Some of the greats getting into that winner's final, having a shot at that grand final spot first. They lose out to Saints Green. I think everybody's been looking at the Saints Green team to just be at the top of the, the food chain right now for mm. TXP4. And uh, they make it into the prizing. I think that's one thing that we can give to the Sudor Gaming team is I know that they brought a couple new players in. And it looks like it has really elevated this team to the next level. I think that, you know, I love the trash talk coming out for them. I love the play style that they have really fast but still coordinated mm. and when it's good we saw in the first two maps that it really pays off and it really is a troublesome thing to fight uh, especially St. Clair were struggling but as soon as St. Clair got a little whiff of success in that control the hard point was one-sided and the search to destroy was nowhere close to what it was on that protocol so it just seems like for that pseudo gaming team yes they've made changes they've made some upgrades but there's still a ways to go before they take that grand final spot. Absolutely, and of course, hats off to Tyler, absolutely frying that game as well, I, I, popping off left, right, and center. I, I wouldn't say carrying, but definitely heading that team going into it, but I agree, Sudor has presence, and definitely there is more to come, and they keep progressing from every competition they're within, but we look forward. We yeah, look we forward into the next. It is a St. Clair rematch. We, we, we sit here and we say Green's going to take it all, but... There's a little hope for me that it's going to be gold this time. Right? I tell you, no matter what, Green's going to win it. No matter what, Green's going to win. Whether it's St. Clair Gold or St. Clair Green, they're both <laughs> a green team. So it's, uh, it's fun to see. We got the hometown heroes on both sides of the stage lining it up for the grand finals. Winner takes the grand prize of $3,000. The loser is going to walk away with prize, but $1,000 for the team of four. It's going to be a fun one. We're going to get things set up. And when we come back, the finale of TXP4, you guys don't want to miss it.